So first and foremost, before we begin this lecture, I want us to at least familiarize with these words, particularly these three words. This is just a brief um, talk about um, this. I will not talk much about this. No? So we have three words here, tausug, basasug, and sinug. So we will try to differentiate these three terms or words. First is the um, word tausug. This is the most familiar thing that we all know. In fact, we are here because of this. So tausug came from two words, um, tau, meaning people, and sug, the sea current. So, um, as the definitions would uh, imply, tausug means the people of the sea, the people of the sea. It is re referred, it is used to refer to the people of the bangsa, bangsa nation, or the people of the Sulu archipelago. Then we have bahasa sug. Bahasa sug, um, bahasa uh, means language. So this is the language that is used by the Tausu people to speak, to converse. And Sinug, on the other hand, is the way of speaking Bahasa Su. There are two types, uh, two kinds of Sinug uh, language. There is um, the Sinug Gimbahanun and the Sinug Parianun. So which of these terms should we use to refer to the language? The word Tausu should never be used to refer to the language because it means Tao, people. No? So we, we should only use these two terms, Basa Sug to refer to the language and Sinug. So here, when someone would say, May ngat ako mag Tausu, I can speak Tausu, it is actually wrong. Although this is the most common way of saying that statement. The correct way should be may ngat ako magbisara bahasa sub that means bahasa sub is the language or may ngat ako magsinug which is also the title of our uh, series magsinug kita meaning I can speak sinug you know we can just uh, that's all the, the emphasis here is we should not use tau sub to refer to the language okay moving on so just a brief uh, discussion about tau sub 101 and magsinug kita so tau sub 101 started in 2012 it is it was an online blog a personal blog by uh, your sterly or in we we share the beauty of the Sinug language we uh, do translations we teach uh, basic conversations and grammar as well so you all know this uh, website uh, maybe not <laughs> actually this is not really updated but what we know is this uh, Facebook page Tausung 101 which most of you here or the other who the other people who contacted me through this um, platform the Facebook page so and what, what about Magsinug Kita? So Magsinug Kita is a free online series of lessons about the uh, Tausug language, the language of the Tausug, which is the Sinug language. So it, uh, I'm planning, we're planning to conduct this every Saturday starting today. So this is the first lesson and I welcome you all to our first lesson. Thank you for really attending uh, this lesson. And who am I? Uh, I am a Tausug born and raised in Sulu. I'm a medical doctor by profession. I am work currently working here in Sulu. And just a disclaimer, I have no formal education on language, etc. I'm not an expert in this field. I'm also a student, just like uh, everyone here. So it's like, so we are actually sharing, you know, learn our, our learning. So it's just, I'm just a native who happens to love sharing the beauty of the Sinog language. So are we ready, guys? Let's go to our first lesson. So, uno in ini. Um, in English, the translation is, uh, what is this? Or more commonly, the Tausugs would usually ask, Uno ini? We omit the in in the middle. So when do we use this uh, question, Uno in ini? We use this when we are asking about an object, not a person. Never use this uh, when asking about person. We use other qu question interrogative uh, pronoun, which is his, you. But this one, in this lesson, we will only talk about uno in ini and we use this question because of the word ini which signifies that the object we are asking about should be very near to the speaker so in english it is uh, the equivalent of the word this okay oops what happened next <laughs> wait okay sorry about that okay let's dissect so the question uno in ini, um, the word uno is the equivalent of the English 
interrogative question which is what in is the topic identifier the although the translation in english is what is this the sinog language has no equivalent of the verb to be is we use in and in is actually a topic identifier which is the equivalent of the word the article the in english any is a locative declension uh, meaning it, it, it is a locator of an object it signifies it, it tells you where that particular object is relative to the first person which is also the speaker so any signifies that the object being referred to is very near we will talk about this uh, particular word and the other examples um, later on so how do we reply how do we answer that question um, in any so we reply uh, in this uh, way let's say you have a cup or a mug and you're holding it so it's very near to you so you're going to use the word any so you will reply in any basu so if someone would ask you um, uno in any what is this you will reply you will take the first uh, the last two words in any then you add the object that you are going to refer so in here it's basu basu is a mug so in any basu this is a mug so we have other examples here and um, i have sent a link for the um, a vocabulary sheet you can download the vocab vocabulary sheet or uh, the excel file or later on i will send it to you again um, i i will be listing a lot of words uh, there i will update that every week so that you can review and um, learn and master these words so today we're going to learn these uh, uh, words that's uh, one big uh, tip in learning a new language or relearning an old language is to increase your vocabulary so here we have Basu. So listen to how I'm going to pronounce these words. Basu. Basu. Bai. Bai. Lawang. Lawang. Manuk. Manuk. And kuting. Kuting. So when someone would ask you, uno in ini, and you would refer to these objects, you will have the following examples. So in ini, basu. So this is a mug or a cup. In ini buy, this is a house. In ini lawang, this is a door. In ini manuk, this is a chicken. In ini kuting, this is a cat. It's, I'm just making I'm just making it simplified, very simplified. Now we can use more um, sino words as I mentioned earlier. You just follow this. Oops, that's a wrong link. I'll just send you a different link. No, this is a wrong link an excel file or a google sheet um, i will be updating that weekly and an audio file audio file for those words for the pronunciation correct pronunciation of the words will also be uploaded so keep checking that link later on but not this one this is the wrong one okay moving on um so he, now we have learned um this um uno in ini what is this and we reply with in ini then we mention the object this is something the word so it's just easy now let's talk about the locators so we have we will be talking about this for locative declensions ini yan yaun and yatu so these are the different declensions used in the sinug language so there are i grouped them into four and there are four forms as well but we will only talk about this first column you know, disregard this three we will discuss that later on on, on other uh, lessons on future lessons so we have the first form the first form is what we already know the English uh, in English it is the um, counterpart of the English word this so the first form is nearest to the first person so ini then the second form is yan or yatun second form uh, signifies that the object is near to the second person and not the first person okay the third form the object is relatively far from both and we use yaun and fourth form 
the object is very far so we use yet two actually there's a there's a fifth form which is say signifying that it's very far let's say yet to had two so we'll try to memorize this ini yan yaun yet two we'll only talk about this four ini yan or yatun yaun and yet two so let's say let let's see how this works so let's say person a um and we have person b okay if person a is the speaker is the first person then there is an object here another object here another object here another object here okay so if the per if, if person A is the first person which is if person A is the speaker and he wants to ask about this particular object which is near to him we will use the declension ini so uno in ini right uno in then lang so uno in ini if he he is still the speaker and he would want to ask about the object near to the second person which is person B we will use the declension yan uno in yan what is that yeah, in english there's only two this and that but in sinog there are four or actually or even five then if uh, person a would want to ask about this object which is relatively both far from both of them he will use the declension yaun and if it's very far from them they will he will use the the declension yan tu so ini yan yaun and yan tu ini is very near to the first person yan if it's near to the second person yaun if it's both uh, uh, far from them and yan tu very far so let's see the examples here so if you would want to ask uno in ini in then we will reply with Again, we have learned this earlier in ini basu so this is a mug then if the object is far from the first person but near to the second person he will uh, we will say uno in yan what is that and we will, he will, we will reply with in yan lawang that is a door uno in yaun the object is both far from them in yaun manu that one is a chicken and how about uno in yad tu? It means the object is very far from both of them, so they will, uh, they will also in reply in yad tu kuting that is a cat. So it's important to always uh, remember your vocabulary, so learn these words um, later on. Okay, so that's all about the um, locative declensions we can you can try to memorize only these four and it will really help later on on our future lessons we will talk about the other declensions how about sipat adjectives so sipat our example here is um, remember the basu the cup so here we uh, mention in ini basu mapasu this is a hot mug so we'll, we'll, we'll study how the pattern works. Ooh. I'm having a problem with this one. So in, Sino, in the Sinug language, there are two kinds of uh, ad adjectives. We have simple adjectives and derived adjectives. So simple simple adjectives are those without the prefix ma. So examples are asibi. Asibi means small. Dakula. Dakula. Big. Lawan, lawan is opposite, and pula, which is uh, red colors. So, derived adjectives, on the other hand, are adjectives starting with the prefix ma. Okay, not all words with uh, the prefix ma is an adjective, by the way. So, there are there are actually verbs who that has uh, a prefix ma, but we'll talk about that later on. This is uh, verbs are very complicated, so we'll talk about adjectives first. So an example of this, an example of this are um, mapaso, hot, malanu, malago, and manahot. Yeah, I'll discuss it here. 
So derived adjectives. So derived adjectives are uh, created or derived by adding the prefix ma to a root word, usually a noun. So we have here an example. The prefix ma is added to the noun pasu. Pasu is um, heat. And then it becomes ma pasu, which is hot. Then we have ma plus laggo. Laggo is size. Becomes the word malaggo, which is big. Then ma, lingkat. Lingkat is beauty. And we have the adjective malingkat, beautiful. So ma pasu, ma pasu. Ma laggo, ma laggo. Ma lingkat, ma lingkat. So how do we use them? Uh, let's go back to our examples. So we have the basu. Again, the, the mug. This is a hot mug. In any basu, mapasu. So in describing an object using adjectives, place the adjective after the object. This is the usual uh, form. So, in our first example, we have in ini basu. Then we add the adjective, which is we have learned mapasu. So, the translations this is a hot mug. So, the adjective usually comes after the object, which is basu. Okay, then is this basu near to the first person? Yes, because we use the word ini. If it's near near to the second person, we will use yan. So in yan, basu, mapasu, mapasu. So that is a hot mug. See the difference? Because in English, you usually state the adjective first before the object. Okay. Let's see. For example, so we have so in ini, so it is near the first person. So we have uh, we already talked about the basu mapasu in ini basu mapasu. This is a hot mark. Then we have an example. We have by in ini by malanu. Malanu means clean from the um the noun lanu cleanliness. In by malanu. So in ini. By Malanu, this is a clean house. In Lawang, in Ini, Lawang Malago. In Ini, Lawang Malago. This is a big door. Malago means big. Okay, so let's try this. Well, actually, this is just simple. You just connect them now. So, in Ini, Manuk Asibi. Asibi means small. So, in Ini, Manuk Asibi. So, this is a small chicken. And then, irini kuting malingkat. This is a uh, malingkat means beautiful. Beautiful cat. Okay. So there you have it. We have uh, this um, our examples. So in ini baso mapaso, in ini bay malanu, in ini lawang malago, in ini manuk kasiwi, and in ini. Uh, Malingkat, kuting malingkat. So there you have it. Actually, that's all. <laughs> that's all in the, in the first on our first lesson. So that's it. Today we learn um, in ini. What is this? How to ask this? And we use this to refer to object. And because we used ini, those that are near to the first person. Then, how do we reply? We reply with in any, then we state the object. Then, the four different, um, the first group of declensions we have ini, yan, yaun, yatu. Ini is near to the first speaker, ya, yan, near to the second person, yaun is far from both, and yatu is very far. Then, how do we add adjectives? So, adjectives are added after the verb and there are two types of adjectives we have the simple which has no ma and the derived adjectives which has the form ma plus the noun and it becomes an adjective like malingkat mapasu 
and a couple of sinog words we also learn a couple of sinog words so with that thank you magsukul um magsukul means thank you for those thanks for those who oh, don't know the word so if you have any questions you can always find me at uh, our facebook page you can message me there I, I always reply as much as i can you can join our whatsapp group chat here and i will be sending feedback forms later on so please please uh, fill them up if you have any suggestions how to improve this um, discussion so that ends our lesson for today thank you let's open everything to question and answers what is my okay so if we have no more questions feel free to send um, i'll be sending a feedback form you feel free to fill that up if you have any other questions if you have suggestions for our next lesson um feel free to uh, share your suggestions as well again again magsukul to the pag attend thank you for attending this uh, short sharing of the lessons um i'm really thankful for you for you guys na nag attend po. Thank you so much. We'll end our class. Thank so cool. Salam kasi rasa. This is Ahmad from Tausog 101. Don't you know anything about Tausog? Salam.